Good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. In today's Wednesday widget, we are going to work on this part you see right here. We're going to machine this on the Tormach, and the trick is going to be fixturing. Before we get into that, I want to thank everybody for the two, the enthusiasm for the two videos I just put out. One on our open house, super excited about that. Uh, I'll update the website page, and I just updated it for information on the preferred hotel. You're of course welcome to stay anywhere, but I got a book. I got a, dis a discounted room rate at the Comfort Inn in Zanesville, and it's well located for both the, uh, getting to the shop and for food and dining and the highway. And, uh, and the Garble CNC Shield. All my videos with Arduinos have been hits. I know that. Uh, I want to keep doing more of them on the automation and mixing CNC and Arduino, but it's awesome to see how many folks love the pen potter. It's so easy to do. A number of folks picked up the little brackets that we're selling to make your own version of that linear rail, inexpensive machine. A lot of fun. Uh, I'm thinking already about turning that into a laser type machine or a scriber to trace out paper for masks and stencils. So, so much cool things to come of that. Um, but let's dive into this part. It's gonna be a great part. We're gonna create it from scratch in SolidWorks. Nothing too hard there, but a lot of folks have asked for SolidWorks type tutorials. Then we're gonna machine it in SprutCam. Nothing tricky, except we're gonna tab this part. And that's where the, that's the real takeaway from this lesson, is not only how to efficiently tab it, but then we're gonna fixture it in a, and actually in the vise in the Tormach, which is again, um, an easy way in my opinion of doing this real quick without having to tear down your table. And then the ringer is gonna be at the end how we easily and uh, how we easily get rid of the real little tab remnants and have them look real good. So let's dive right in folks. Okay, so here's the part, and just a quick reference, it's a 2.75 inch OD wheel, uh, and uh, the, the ringer is we've got this radius on the edge here, which would mean it would be difficult to machine this and fixture it or hold it down with a toe clamp or strap clamp as you traditionally would. So, like I said, we're gonna machine this and tab it. So let's create the part from scratch. I might reference back to uh, the existing one if I wanna look at something, but the idea is to show, hopefully, if I uh, don't eat my words here, how easy I think SolidWorks is to do this. Oops. As I say that, as I select the wrong face here, folks, sorry. Front plane I wanted, and then click on normal to the front plane, and we'll radius the as 2.75 and we'll go ahead and make the inner hub here as well which again can be whatever we really want there's no per point to this part specifically it's just for fun extrude 2.125 and boom so now we've got our rough shape let's go ahead and add that fill it on the edge. Now the only end mill I've got that I really like for this, which I'll show you later, is a two millimeter, and so that's about a 787 radius, like so, and there we go. Okay, so now let's create those inner spokes. Now I've always considered myself very much a SolidWorks hack, folks, because the truth is I, I just kinda, I do what I need to do to get it done, so um, it is what it is. I tend to be pretty efficient. So we're gonna create a box and we'll say it's 0.125 and then we'll just mirror this across this line. Oops, entities mirror. And we'll mirror it about that line. And then that'll give us our spoke diameter. Now that looks a little bit too much. Let's. Let's do 0.062, yeah, let's do 0.1, just for, for fun. Okay, and so what we'll do is the same thing over here. I bet these SolidWorks experts right now are, are cringing at how, how I'm doing this, but again, I get it done. Mirror about that line, and then what we'll do is I'll do a center point arc. So I'll select the center point, I'll come out here to our whatever radius we want and then just drag on down to here, boom. And we can redimension that I believe if we wanted to. So yeah, we'll make it 1.125 for something precise. And then I can trim a bunch. Now I could have done these as, uh, I could have done some of these as reference geometry to begin with, truth be told, but um, it will be okay. 
Um, oops, I wanted that one. There we go. And then I'm going to extrude cut through all. Oops. Forgot to uh, decrease that, so here we'll fix that real quick. Make that 0.75 and trim that. There we go. Extrude cut. That's fine. Okay, and now let's fill it that. Boom, 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 boom. What's that radius? We'll go point. We'll come in there with a um, probably like a three sixteenth. So point zero, oh, excuse me, point one will be enough um, to to machine those with a three sixteenth. Looks good. Let's chamfer them, make them look nice too. Oops. There we go, 0.02, okay. And then we can just do a linear, sorry, rotor, circular pattern they call it now, I guess. I thought it was linear before. And we'll just do four of them and it's equal spacing. So let's see here, we obviously need to select everything, including the chamfer. And usually it, um, I think I got something wrong here. Hmm. Let's try that again. Circular pattern about that, and then we'll do four and the features and faces. There we go. That looks right. Boom, boom, boom. So there's the majority of our 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 spoke. Now if we toggle back, I had made the pockets smaller for some text down here. Uh, I think that's the only big difference. Smaller inner circle, which by the way also chamfered. So let's just go ahead and change that. That's how easy. Um, uh, this is a intentional dig at uh, at the folks who don't have parametric CAD in a in a half joking manner. I could not begin to live with uh, without it. So if I don't know which one this is, I can just double click on that wall. Shh. Usually, hold on. Why is that doing that? Well, that tells me what it is over here. Edit that sketch. We'll make this point two, five. Okay. And actually, you know what? No, we'll make that point three, seven, five. And let's reduce the outside radius of that spoke. So again, that shows me it's this one. And we'll change that to 0.95 maybe? Well, no, more than that. 1.05. 1, 1 We're just having fun here, folks. Yeah, that looks good. Now, the way I put the text down here isn't crazy scientific, but it works. So let's go to Sketch, the little text guy here. Um, but before, actually, before we do that, let's go to Insert. Reference geometry, no, I lied, sorry. Again, why I'm a hack. Let's go to center point arc, sketch on that plane, choose my center dot, and we'll come over here and we're gonna create, what we're gonna create is the bottom line for the text. And so we'll start at about here and we can, we can uh, reference this later. Now, this someone please tell me how to do this the right way. I wanna have it end at about the same um, y height on the other side. So, so the way I sometimes do that is I face, I go normal two on the view here, and then I drag my part up like so. Now let's insert that again. I'll start it like here, and then what I'll do is sometimes I'll actually, I'll try to hold down control and the mouse wheel, which lets me scroll up, and I'll actually line up the blue line with the top here, now I've done it. Boom. Boom. 
and just come up to about there. Incredibly unscientific, folks. Choose for construction, and now I've got my arc. Now, when I go to text, I can type in Wednesday widget. I can spell Wednesday correctly. Um, it'll be fun too because we'll actually do some engraving. I like to use, let's use my, the font I use on some of my videos, which is OCR. And let's see what 0.15 on height looks like. And if we center it, that gets us centered. And are we cutting into, no, I think that's okay. Now click OK. Now I think if we go ahead and edit this sketch, we should be able to move that text a hair lower by doing 0.27. Yeah, exactly. So we want to get that G uh, and the Y up a hair because that's the lowest point. So 1.25 works for me. Um, so you get the idea roughly how to do some crude text work. So we'll extrude, cut the Wednesday widget text. That'll make it easier to deal with in CAM. 0.004 is fine. Now, we need to make some strap clamps for this part. But John, I thought you said we weren't going to use strap clamps. Everybody just calm down. Front plane, just little guys, we'll say eighth of an inch. Oops. We'll make them three sixteenths actually. And we'll extrude them down, doesn't really matter. And we'll save that as strap clamp. You can see I've already um, made this ahead of time. Now, new assembly. And what we're going to do is put in the wheel from the video. That's the part here. And then um, this is just how embarrassing my SOLIDWORKS skills are. I learned from Brad of Tactical Key Change that if you select the pin, obviously, this stays visible. We don't actually need it here anymore because we're going to do a linear pattern. But first, um, I care a lot about how this part is oriented in SOLIDWORKS relative to the Cartesian coordinates of the XYZ. So let's create some mates to put it exactly where we want it in the cam. So what we're going to do, actually first I think we're going to have to put in, probably as a way to get up by this without doing uh, this, but reference geometry axis. And we're going to create uh, what would effectively be the Z axis. So we'll do that at the intersection of the um, top and right plane, I think. Yes. Um, my um, cam software, graphics card has a hard time with the screen recording software at the same time. So sometimes I don't see everything, which is annoying. So mate the center of that to the axle. Oh, you know what? Sorry. The first part you put in is always fixed. So you got to right click, float that mate this to our axis, there we go. And then we want to mate, the top would be Z0, so I'll mate that to, should be the front plane, I can't see it, but yeah, there we go, that works. And that's um, all we need, except I want this rotated, just like so, so when we machine it, you can read the text. Um, so what we'll do is we'll make that and this plane parallel, and that should force it to be square, perfect. Now, while we're in the mates, I'll take my clamp and I'll put it right over this, that's fine, and let's drag it to, okay, we can get out of the mates. Drag it to about there, right click, and I'm gonna fix that, and then I'll do a circular pattern around any of the circles works. Four of them and equal spacing. Actually, you know what? Let's try if we can get away with three, like so. We'll see if that works. So, um, let's see here. Is that gonna bite me? No, we can work around that. Now, save my part, or save the assembly real quick. Assembly video. Now let's go ahead and click my button here to export to Sprout Cam 9. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you look, we are centered exactly how I want, which is great. Although, in, because we imported them all at once, you, you'd be okay if you weren't, but I think it's much easier, especially if you need to re-import stuff from, from SolidWorks, you can basically do so and ensure it's in the right orientation without having to use the transform and figure out where it goes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move these three clamps from the part into fixtures. So all I gotta do is, I think I can just drag this way. Fixtures, fixtures, fixtures. So if we go into fixtures, they're probably all nested, doesn't really matter, like so. Okay, now I can turn them off. I don't want to see them. And let's dive into the cam. Here's what a dork I am. I love this stuff. Like it gets me so excited when I think of, you know, a tool path I like or that I think I can get this a program to work. Um, it's stupid. So uh, roughing waterline, select, uh, am I not going to be able to, that pisses me off. Well, you know, actually you can select the curves, I think. Um, oops. And let's see if that works. Job zone, we'll see. Uh, let's see here, for me, 31 is a quarter inch, two flute end mill. We'll run that 5100 and eh, we'll go 15. We definitely want the spiral. We'll come in 0.07 to 0.05 radius. We're gonna go all the way down. We might wanna go down a hair further actually, just to make sure. We'll do it, um, we'll do it one pass, you know what? And we'll just do a little bit thinner width of cuts, say 30%, should, be, should not have a problem handling it. Climb it, we don't need a finished cut. I bet it'll be acceptable as is. Actually, you know what? Well, we're gonna wanna do that anyway because of, um, that did work, great. We're gonna wanna leave a little bit of stock to come in with the 3 16 to clean up. So we'll do a 10 thou and what we'll do is finishing water, or excuse me, 2D contouring, and curve, and then we'll come in with, for me, it's tool 21, which is a one, eight. actually, you know what, you can just type in 3 16 I'm uh, training Jared up in Sprout Cam now, and he loves that you can put in fractions instead of the uh, nominal diameter, 5100. We can go pretty quick, because it's just a skim cut, 0.13, one cut, and we'll do nothing there. All I need to do, God, I wish Brewcam didn't start things in the corner like that. Um, easy to fix, but just seems silly. A little bit of a ramp in. Let's save it before we do something stupid and forget. And let's render that and see what we get. It should have a nice spiral in. Looks good. Good, just make sure you don't have, we can't see that bottom line, which normally I can, this outside line here is um, the chamfer here, so you can sometimes see when it is correct, cutting correctly, but I can't hear, again, because this, this perimeter line is buried a little, but um, well, I trust that. So let's select the other parts, get these four all done. Job zone in here, same thing. Curve. These I'll just have to go quickly fix the start in and out now. The one of the new things in Sprout 9 is it should um, this wand here will mean when you pull out um, it'll edit similar features, which can be handy. Sometimes you want to turn it off because you want to edit only one at a time, but you can see it's doing all these, which is kind of nice. And uh, we'll triple check that later when we go through a, a proper simulation. Um, what's actually in the roughing waterline, add this to it. Job zone, and we'll have to do, because we're leaving some stock, we'll have to add it to the 316's cleanup as well to get it to the proper diameter. And let's make sure that we can machine that circle okay without 
Yeah, it'll be a little bit tight on the waterline radius. Let's take a look. On the ramp in, rather. Oops, way too fast. Let's see here, start over here. 